Okay, next up, uh, we're going to keep moving right along. We got uh, upgrading and migrating your SQL Server based enterprise geo database, and uh, it's going to be presented by Kent Rothrock, president of Highland Mapping. Kent is an expert GIS analyst, and I'm just going to leave it right there. No, um, he's a programmer, a database administrator, and he has a background in uh, cadastral mapping and enterprise GIS implementations. Uh, with almost two decades of experience, he serves as senior project manager and has worked for numerous uh, southeastern counties, municipalities, and un universities, uh, the South Carolina National Guard, as well as nonprofits and private entities. He continues to help client clients manage all types of data, spatial and non-spatial, implement custom tools and processes, um, build complex applications, and provides high-quality remote DBA support. Kent has his master's in geography from Appalachian State. And I can also attest that he is a heavy metal drummer. Kent Rothrock. Thanks. <laughs> please, 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 please. All right, uh, thanks. Hope everybody's doing well. Sort of a change of topic. I mean, I guess it's all considered ArcGIS for server, but I'm not going to talk anything about web stuff. So I, I'm more of a database guy. Um, I have a web programmer, so I've got somebody that knows how to do that stuff. Um, but what I'm going to talk about is a typical thing that I deal with, and a lot of the work I do year in, year out, is helping people migrate and or upgrade their enterprise geodatabases. So we've got to, it's come time, we've got to upgrade, we've got to move the stuff to a new server box, and that's a lot of what I do on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. In fact, I've got a bunch of projects like that right now lined up. So quick and dirty outline the, the problem, talk about how we get to this place a lot of times. Lots of moving parts, all the different things you need to be thinking about, all the things that can go wrong, server concerns, planning the upgrade. I'm going to outline some specific steps that I use uh, to, do, to do this kind of work. Again, a lot of times you've got to bob and weave and deal with the walls that come up in front of you um, and talk about some other issues and make some recommendations. So what's the problem? Why do we have to upgrade? And again, I deal with people that will wait a really, really, really long time, and I deal with people that are really, you know, do it quite frequently. And I, I, as a vendor, I don't really have a lot of control over that. I just respond to their needs. But there's numerous factors that can drive it. Outdated hardware. Servers just can't handle it anymore. Or they're starting to die, or we've run out of space, or something like that. Outdated software. Again, this is a huge one. So we're wanting to continually upgrade our ArcGIS environment. Well, you've got to keep up with SQL, which has to keep up with Windows. So there's a lot of different moving parts here, and things quickly get outdated. I've still got clients, believe it or not, that in their county have Windows XP machines. Windows XP was released the week of 9-11. I mean, that's 16 years ago. You know, people still use it. I still have clients that have... 9293, I've seen. I did a 92 upgrade last year. I mean, 92 came out way back when. So, a lot of that stuff. Oh, whoops. Better security. So, we want to improve our security. New available features, virtual servers, 64 bit operating systems, things like that. A lot of virtual servers. I see, you know, more of that than anything these days. Vendor support. Again, you may have some third-party application that needs to be upgrade. You need to upgrade your system so that their application will work or will continue to be supported. And yeah, a lot of times it's Esri. You know, Esri's saying we don't really support 9.2 anymore. You need to upgrade. And some other sort of force it can be anything. So everything's related. You could do one thing and break everything. Right, So you've got to really think about all the different moving parts. And even in, you know, I work for a spectrum of clients, like Dave said, National Guard, NC State, and I work for little bitty towns and counties, and a lot of little ones have enterprise geodatabases too. 
And so there's a lot of different, but, but even the smallest implementations, there's a lot of moving parts. So typically, you got to upgrade your PCs. A lot of times, this is a big deal. So I'll go to some clients, and it's like, it's not a big deal upgrading the server, so to speak, but we have 45 ArcGIS desktops. And again, in a smaller place, that's a lot of uninstalling and reinstalling. So that's something that has to be dealt with. Version compliance. So is the version that's going to be on the desktop going to match or at least be newer than what we're doing on the server? So if you've got 10.1 and you really like 10.1 desktop and we're upgrading to 10.4 or 10.5, probably going to have to let go of 10.1 and upgrade. Windows compliance. Again, I give a couple of examples here. 10.3 does not work any way, shape, or form on Windows XP. So once you get to that point, and with that one client I mentioned, we had to do a little workaround to deal with the fact that they've still got XP machines that they couldn't change out yet, and those people used Arc Reader, and Arc Reader 10.3 does not work on XP. So we had to do a workaround there. And also Windows 10, 10.2 doesn't work very well on Windows 10. So you've got all these moving parts between operating systems and software versions. System requirements, again, as the software has progressed, ArcGIS for desktops always been a hog. Everybody that has that knows it. you got to have lots of RAM, lots of resources, good video card. If you're thinking about doing ArcGIS Pro in the future, you need even more resources. So you got to think about the system requirements in terms of hardware on the PC side. Again, you probably got web servers. Even my little bitty clients tend to have web servers, running web services. That, that's got to be part of this package as well. Again, number of client machines to be upgraded it can be an issue if you got one IT guy running around uninstalling and reinstalling ArcGIS. ArcGIS versus SQL. So again, you've got to know what goes with what, what's been certified with what. And in some cases, you'll find that even if Esri doesn't bless it yet, it may work. But generally, the rule of thumb is we want to see something documented that says it's been certified. So a good example is 10.4 doesn't work with 2008. And I actually had a client find that out the hard way. They, and I wasn't involved. They just upgraded one of their desktops to 10.4. They were still on SQL Server 2008. Didn't work. They had to revert back to 10.3. SQL Native Client, again, we use pretty much direct connect strictly these days. Uh, not a lot of application connections anymore, although I think they're still supported at least through 10.3. I know they were. Uh, so you got to put native client on everybody's machine too, and if you're doing 2014, that's a little different piece of software when you're doing the ArcGIS desktop upgrade, that is. And then third-party application requirements. Again, a lot of people, I've, I've seen more than one case where somebody's upgrade got stifled because one Thing that they paid some other vendor to do did not certify 10.3 or 10.4 yet. I've seen people get held way back by that, too. And we end up having to have some parallel system that'll keep 10.2 running until they upgrade the, their software. All right, so server side. Again, system requirements. What kind of operating system, what kind of hardware do we need to run the the specific versions of SQL Server and ArcGIS. Virtual implementations, it's the norm now. I mean, this is what everybody's doing. I'm not really a hardware guy. I can recommend specs for servers, but all I know is when I remote into it, it's a server, whether it's a rack, a tower, or a virtual. As long as you got somebody that knows how to manage the virtual environment, it works awesome. RAM and processing power, again, we're talking about serious resource hogs here, whether it's SQL Server, whether it's ArcGIS, so you better plan accordingly and have a lot of horsepower. Shoot high every time. Again, Windows, SQL, ArcGIS, do they all play together? Will they all work? And a lot of times it's a big deal. I mean, if you're upgrading and you forgot to budget for a new SQL license, it can be sort of expensive. So you got to be thinking about all those moving parts. Replication, do we have replication going from 
one server to another. That can be an issue. I just had a call from a client of mine, uh, actually a, a little town that I've not worked with, but they replicate with one of my clients, and they wanted to upgrade to 10.5 while my client's at 10.2, so the replicas don't really work anymore. So we've got to go in there and figure out a workaround around that. A lot of times plan accordingly. Everybody upgrade at the same time. It'll work better. Automated task. Most of the time when I upgrade and migrate a server, the thing that takes the most time is replicating all the automated stuff. So typically on a client server, I'll have lots of geoprocessing jobs, import output or uh, import export stuff, ETL running, and those things can be very difficult to move. And generally you got plan to get all that done. Database design cleanup. Usually if you're migrating and upgrading, great time to go through and do some house cleaning. Delete stuff you don't use anymore. If you want to reorganize things, this is the time to do it. And again, that can be considerable as well. The license manager, again, that's it's gotten really easy nowadays for, for concurrent licenses as long as they're going to be around. Um, you've got to upgrade the license manager as well. Windows Firewall. Again, especially with the newer versions, this used to not be as big a deal. But nowadays, if you're going to use Windows Firewall on the server or the PC, you end up having to do a little configuration to allow SQL to communicate back and forth. Pretty easy to do, uh, but it's something that will you'll stub your toe on if you don't if you don't do that. And again, if you're using three tier connection, the old 5151 port for Arc SD. Uh, you probably should start moving toward two-tier, the direct connect world. So planning the upgrade. Rule number one, don't tell your supervisor you can do it next week. It normally is going to take a while, even for little shops that I work with. You know, it's something we need to plan for. Figure out if you got, you know, third-party stuff, intergov, um, blueprints, whatever sort of third-party thing, CityWorks, does it play with the version of ArcGIS and the version of SQL Server that we're looking to go to? Because a lot of them will, a lot of them won't, a lot of them you got to wait. you got to think about this. You don't want to upgrade, go through all this work, and then find out some real critical thing doesn't work now. Do you have the hardware in place? Do you have the right operating system? Is everything on the network? You know what user accounts have to be set up, so forth and so on. You may have to budget for the hardware. Same with software. Do you need to buy SQL? How to license SQL? You know, SQL is one of those things that there's a, prices are all over the place, right? Microsoft wants you to buy it by the core, which is, if you can afford it, it's the way to go because nobody's ever going to get mad at you for having 1,000 people hitting it concurrently. If you're really small, you can buy it by the CAL, the Client Access License, probably a lot less expensive way to go. But you'll look around, and there's a vast array of pricing. And you can buy it from a lot of places. How many client machines do you have to upgrade? Will they support the version of ArcGIS? Again, in terms of operating system and hardware, are you going to do ArcGIS Pro in the future? Who's going to do all the upgrading? Got to be thinking about all that. And I'll talk about the order of, of all this in a minute. How big's the jump? Can determine how it's done. So I had a client, somebody that I worked for a long, for a long time, um, and, out of, and I hadn't heard from them in a while, and they finally called and said, okay, man, we hadn't upgraded in you know, seven, eight, nine, ten years. We're going to finally make the jump. We're going to go to 10.3. Well, come to find out, they were still on 9.2. Well, you can't upgrade a 9.2 SD database to 10.3. They've waited too long. And in their case, it was a small database. So all I did was create a new database and copy all the data over and just reset everything up. But that's when, you know, again, most of you guys aren't going to get caught there. If you wait too long sometimes, it can make it a little more difficult. You could have gone from 9.2 to 9.3 and then gone from 9.3 to 10.3, but it's hard to even find the media for 9.3 now, you know, and be able to install all that and, it wasn't worth the trouble. Are there any business processes, events that can delay the upgrade? Have a lot. This comes into play all the time. So I'm working with a the client. They want to upgrade, but 
they're doing and they're in the middle of a reval if it's a county or they've got some sort of something going on some sort of other upgrade going on and so we got to plan accordingly again a lot of times it makes sense to wait and how much data has got to be moved can always be a factor especially with rasters you know vector data anymore is pretty small I've got some clients that have you know two terabyte raster data files that have to get moved around it can be sort of a pain all right, so this is just a one way to do it. So typically the first thing you want to do if you've got a web server, that's a client. So just like desktop clients, it's got to be upgraded. So again, in a lot of cases, it's going to be the same web server. In a lot of cases, it's going to be a new web server. Either way, you want to go ahead and get that upgraded, get whatever website or web applications you've got going, going at that newer version of ArcGIS for server. You know, still connecting to the old server at this point, right? Get that squared away, get it tested. Upgrade the license manager. For any of your concurrent users, again, concurrent may be a thing of the past before too long. See your Esri representative about that. But for now, we're still using concurrent licenses, license managers. Got to upgrade that first. And it's easy. You know, it used to be that everything had to be on the same version. Now you can have... 10.1 and a 10.5 license manager on the same machine. So get that done. It's usually just a few minutes. Upgrading third-party stuff. So, for example, I write little custom toolbars for a lot of my clients to enhance their workflows. You want to get that done. A lot of times, especially with add-ins, they don't have to be upgraded, but sometimes they do. Uh, it's like I had a client call the other day, and it went back to some tools I'd wrote 10 years ago that were done with a setup file, so sort of pre-add-in, so we needed to sort of redo all that uh, prior to their upgrade. So make sure that stuff works, because again, you could upgrade, everything goes great, and then, oh, this tool doesn't work. And it may take whoever wrote that time to, to generate that. Upgrade the clients again. Go around, do all the uh, upgrades on the client piece. Configure the new data server. So typically what I'll do, especially if we're doing a migration, migrations tend to be easier because I've got basically a box that I can get everything up and running and then do the live cutover, right? So I'll get, I'll, I'll get my new uh, admin access to my server. We'll get SQL loaded. We'll get RGS desktop loaded. I'll go ahead and get all the users in SQL that I need to if they're SQL authenticated users or Windows groups or something like that. I'll go ahead and get them on the on the instance. And then I'll copy the databases. And this is, I put in parentheses there, dry run. This is the test. Everybody's still using the old server, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move the databases over, specifically the vectors, what I'm worrying about. And I'm going to make sure I can do an upgrade successfully and not have any problems because I want to get it upgraded. I want to get all my jobs going and test. Again, two ways. You can detach, attach, copy the data and log files over and reattach, or you can restore, or you can make a backup and then copy that and restore it. You can also use copy database functionality. So there's a few different ways uh, to do that. If you're using SQL authentication and you use detach, uh, attach, or restore from backup, so typically the way I do it is my, if I'm using SD schema, SD user is going to be SQL authenticated and data loaders typically SQL authenticated versus Windows authenticated users. You need to run a little script to sync the logins between the new instance and the database you've copied over, internal um, IDs that, that get synced. And it's a real easy script. If you need that, email me. I'll be glad to, uh, to help you with that. I'm glad to share. It's no big deal. So again, make sure you've got all your users in SQL. Run the little script to sync them. Make a DBO connection to the database, whether it's using SA password or just some other admin account on the server. Again, and I'm usually, my preferred way to do this is on the server. Now again, sometimes I run into clients 
if I haven't worked with them before, where their IT doesn't like to do that, they're real protective and territorial, don't want that. But in the best case, the way this will go the fastest and easiest is if you can have admin access to the, the database server. Upgrade SQL and ArcGIS. So it's pretty easy to do. And again, this is still on a test database. Everybody's still working on the old stuff. Our, uh, in SQL, all you really have to do, if you're restoring it, sort of does it internally, but there's like a little compatibility setting that you can change in the database options. In ArcGIS, there's the upgrade. So you go to the properties of the DBO connection, and if that upgrade geo database is lit up, Hit that, and it runs a little, a little process. I have some specific SQL database settings that I always stick to in terms of uh, growth parameters and things like that. So th this is the time when I would go in there and tweak that. And then if I've got versions, I'm going to do some test editing, reconcile posting, compressing, on the server, and I want to usually at least have one test PC that's up to that version, too, that I can just do some test edits. You never know if something's not going to work. Uh, usually this isn't a problem, but I want to make sure I can do everything I can do on the old system successfully. And then migrate all the automated processes. So I use SQL Server Agent a lot. I run lots and lots of complex job steps, involve all sorts of scripts and files and SQL code and all that. There's techniques to copy that stuff, whether you restore the old MSDB database, which actually stores all that job info, or you script it out and do it one job at a time, but you generally end up having to copy and paste actual script files from the other server if you're using external stuff like Python scripts and batch files. So that tends to take a while. This is the part, like I, like I alluded to earlier, that takes the longest, generally, when I do these sorts of things. So again, if you're doing the upgrade on the desktop side, I've made a connection. The very first thing, you can see the Upgrade Geodatabase button is lit. I hit it. It launches the little tool. I say OK. Runs through. You just want to see all black. All black means good. That's not good. So you can periodically run into little issues. Sometimes it's a little internal corruption that you may not have noticed may not prevent the edits from working but there's something wrong you know five percent of the time i hit this 95 percent of the time it, it goes perfectly fine so there's a few little things that can trip you up again sql server agent i just showed here moving all the jobs that's a client i don't, I don't remember who that is but you can see all the sql server agent jobs we got so it can be Quite, quite a lot of them. So then we plan for the live upgrade. We've got everything moved over. We've got all the jobs uh, moved over, and they've, they're working. Now we're ready to do the live cutover. And the beauty of this methodology is that generally I can do the live cutover in a couple hours. We've done all the heavy lifting Everybody's been just cruising along on the old system, and then when we're ready to cut over, it's minimum downtime. I don't want clients to be down for two or three days. It's like we're doing this in two or three hours, and everybody's back on. Now, I always uh, recommend they just sort of do some testing, kick the tires that day maybe uh, before they jump right back in, but usually this goes real smooth. So with raster databases, again, it can be a little different. If we have old school raster databases where we actually have all the rasters living in SQL, it can be some big files to move, but it's the same concept as with the vector data. If we have mosaic data sets and those uh, raw imagery that the mosaic's pointing at has got to move, you may have to repair paths, and there's a tool in our catalog that makes that super easy to do. It just takes a few minutes to Recreate replicas. Generally, when you migrate and upgrade, I mean, you can keep existing replicas. A lot of times it makes more sense to rebuild them at that point. You can go either way there, just test, test, test. Have end users do some test queries and edits. Republish web services and test apps there. And then at that point, once that, those apps work, repoint the web apps to the new server now. So you have to 
That's why you're republishing web servers. And then another key thing to remember, render the old database uneditable. One of the worst things that could ever happen is you do an upgrade and then find out that somebody down the hall is still editing the old database. That is not good. So if you can't just take it offline, which sometimes isn't an optimal solution, at least go in there and unregister everything as versioned so nobody can edit it. Little things like that you don't think about will get you. ELA licensing. So, again, a lot of people have that now. Understand, as a SQL guy and SDE guy, when that runs out and you try to connect that next day, it's not going to say, hey, your ELA license needs to be upgraded. It's just not going to work. So know the date when your ELA expires. See, it's really easy to up, update it in the SD config or uh, SD server config table, but know that. Backups, obviously, I use SQL to make a backup. Obviously, I then hand it off to IT people to put it wherever they put them in the cloud or whatever. Periodic disaster recovery testing is also a great idea. Also, here's another thing. If you want, don't want to have everybody have to redo all their MXDs, you can rename the new server as the old server and redo the IP. Your IT guy's got to be involved. It's not that hard to do. It doesn't take, it's one extra step in that you have to tell SQL that its host name changed, but there's a little script that you can get to do that. But that is doable if you don't want to have to have everybody rebuild their stuff. So recommendations, plan carefully, allocate plenty of time. Don't wait too long. Try to get this done every few years. Have an upgraded client test box. You can test, test, test. You don't want to find out the hard way that something's not working and then have to scramble to try to get it fixed real, real fast. Don't get rid of that old server too quick. You may find out after years of hoarding stuff there that you're missing something. Don't let IT take it off and reformat it real fast. Try to get them to leave it up for a while so we can make sure we got everything. A lot of times people use it as file storage too. Again, do a dry run one time. Do some house cleaning. And this is a good chance to revise your versioning workflows, replication workflows. All righty, am I good on time? Questions? Nothing? Crickets? <laughs> oh, we got one. So he was asking about uh, 10.5 and data warehouse. I have not. That is coming soon. I have a lot. I have a. I have one client that's already done. We've we've done the web server, and we've done some desktops. But I haven't. It, that's coming in the coming weeks. So I'll be I'll be exploring that. Anything else? Thank you. Let's go have lunch.